Assalamualaikum Firstly, I would like to thank all participants for joining this webinar with the title of Roles of Renewable Energy in Global Energy Transition for Enhancing Energy Security. This webinar is broadcasted live on IEEE PES Malaysia YouTube channel and Facebook platform. This webinar is organized by IEEE UITM Student Branch and co-organized by IEEE Power and Energy Society, PES Malaysia, together with Solar Research Institute Sri UITM. I am Ashikim from IEEE University Technology Mara, UITM Student Branch, and I will be the MC for this session. Our speaker is Associate Professor I.R. Dr. Nofri Anita Dahlan from the School of Engin Electrical Engineering, formerly known as the Faculty of Electrical Engineering, College of Engineering, University of Ajimara, Shah Alam. She will be giving a talk on roles of en renewable energy in global energy transition for enhancing energy security. Before I pass the session to our speaker, I would like to inform all participants if you have any question regarding the discussed topic, you can post your question in the YouTube and Facebook chat box. I will post the question to the speaker during the Q&A session. First of all, I would like to invite Associate Professor I.R. Dr. Ahmad Farid Abidin, Community Member of the IEEE Power and Energy Society Malaysia to give a brief introduction to IEEE PES to all of you. Dr. Farid, to you. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Uh, Shikin. So please uh, allow me to spend a few minutes to share who we are. Okay, IEEE Power and Energy Society, who we are and where we are going. Let's we uh, look through the mission of IEEE. So the mission of IEEE is we foster technological innovations and excellence for benefit of humanity. The vision of IEEE is uh, we will be essential to the global technical community and to technical professionals everywhere and be universally recognized for the contribution of technology and of the technical professional in improving global conditions and uh, IEEE uh, move with the six core values which is trust, global community building, integrity in action, service uh, to humanity, partnership and growth nurturing. And IEEE, uh, based on the IEEE strategic plan 2020 and 20, to 2025, IEEE will drive global innovation through broad collaborations and the sharing of knowledge, enhance public understanding of engineering and technology, and pursue standards for their practical applications, be trusted source of educational services and resources to support lifelong learning, provide opportunities for career, and professional developments and as well inspire a worldwide audience by building communities that advance technical interests, inform public policy and expand knowledge for the benefit of humanity. IEEE uh, is the well known the, as a world's largest professional association uh, focusing on advancing technology for humanity and in terms of global reach uh, IEEE have uh, more than 400,000 members uh, which cover about uh, more than 160 countries and also we do have the 123 students members and we uh, conduct or organize almost 2,000 annual conferences. In terms of technical uh, platform uh, or technical breadth, uh, IEEE provides more than 4.5 million technical documents. Also, we do provide 200 or more than 200 top cited protocols and also uh, 1,300 active standards. And uh, we do have 49 technical societies. In terms of uh, social, social engagement or social impact, uh, IEEE uh, closely conduct the public policy engagements global humanitarian efforts and also we provide the education as well as certifications and also we 
uh, emphasize our activity in terms of ethics in, in technology. Okay, uh, as we know that PES is one of the uh, technical society under ATPE. Uh, PES or Power Union Society is the second largest technical society under ATPE. In total, actually, ATPE uh, have a 38 uh, technical society, including the PES. So PES uh, have created uh, almost 45% or more than 45% standards under ATPE. So uh, how the membership can help you? Okay, as a member, uh, the member can grow and maintain uh, technical expertise and get connected to other professional uh, under PES, as well as under the ATPE Technical Society and contribute to the future of power and energy. And uh, the member can save money on wearable program as well as materials. So stay technically proficient with the PES, where we conduct a few uh, activity under PES. Uh, we do have an online webinar tutorials, on-site training workshops, and practice-oriented technical journal, uh, plain talk uh, for the basic courses uh, for industry novice. And PES is deploying significant resources uh, for training and lifelong learning activities for our engineer members. So many resources are eligible under our platforms. Uh, for the ITP PES Resource Center, uh, the access is over than 1,400 items, uh, which is the most extensive library contents in World of World Third, uh, which is uh, pertaining to the field of power and energy. So all the material, all the document are placed in web platforms such as tutorials, videos, uh, technical reports, journal articles, archive webinars, conference slides, and many more. Okay, looking to the uh, global engagements uh, through the local chapter, okay, we are in region 10. So in total, uh, PES have a PES have uh, 10 regions, uh, region 1 to 7, so somewhere at northern North America, okay, region 9 at the uh, southern America, and region 8 uh, encompasses of the uh, Africans, Middle East, uh, Russia, and in Europe. So we have uh, uh, over 38,600 members from uh, uh, almost 150 countries. Okay, we, uh, in total, we have 260 chapters and 421 student chapters. So PES chapters are a great way to plug in to the society in most parts of the world and get involved. So we can see that when we join the PES, we have uh, greatly connected with the other uh, society or the other uh, regions uh, where the regions is composed to in the entire world. So here are uh, the leader who, who already drive the movement uh, PES since 1994. So now uh, the current uh, chair is hit by the uh, Professor Hazri Moklis. So what we did, okay, PES uh, Malaysia uh, conduct a few activities such as invited lecturers, conferences. Uh, we do provide awards for the uh, outstanding engineer. And definitely, we have a uh, close collaborative uh, activity with industries, and we do conduct the technical activities, uh, final year project awards, reaching out to members, and as well as the senior member drive. So, uh, let's become a member today. So, uh, we do have the uh, special or privilege for the past student membership, uh, applicable for the one year where the PES uh, student member are able to uh, enjoy a free subscription to the PES award-winning power and energy magazines. And uh, they also can gain uh, free access to the PES resource center with hundreds of technical reports, tutorials, videos, and presentations. And uh, receive a free membership in your local PES chapter. Receive discounts at dozens of PES-sponsored or co-sponsored conferences meeting in uh, related area around the world. And also uh, there is a discount for the technical tutorials. And uh, for those who, uh, who are joined uh, PES member, ISS student member, uh, there is a free series 
that designed to specifically help uh, the students uh, connect with the employers in the power and energy industries. Okay, the offer is only valid for the individuals, individuals for one year only and to those who have never been a PES member before. Okay, join me as we bring more power to a uh, future and let's, let's rejoin PES. Okay, here there is a uh, uh, email uh, for the PES, okay, at repepestmalaysia at gmail.com and please uh, browse to our website. Uh, there is a many contents and many activity uh, that will be shared uh, for those who are uh, join or can browse the activity the browse the, the uh, websites okay also we do have a facebook okay the https www.facebook.com itpe pass malaysia okay here the lineup of the uh, uh, scom for 2021 Okay, thank you. Over to you, Shikin. Thank you, Dr. Farid, for the introduction to IEEE PES. We hope that those who have yet to register as IEEE and IEEE PES member, please join us as you will get all the benefits mentioned by Dr. Farid just now. Now, it is time for the main agenda. Let me introduce our speaker for this webinar. Associate Professor I.R. Dr. Nofri Yenta Dahlan is currently an Associate Professor at the School of Electrical Engineering, formerly known as the Faculty of Electrical Engineering, College of Engineering, UITM Shah Alam. Recently, she served as the Deputy Director of UITM Solar Research Institute, Suri. She currently involved in developing energy benchmarking formula for government hospital in Malaysia and served as policy consultant for United National Industrial Development Organization, UNIDO, for Malaysia Energy Efficiency and Solar Thermal Application Project, Mayfesta. She has received a number of awards for her innovative research in CMVP, EVO, and e AEE, and under these capacities, she has trained more than 400 MNV practitioners and involved in an MV audit for more than 30 energy performance contracts, EPC, and green technology projects. With the introduction just now, I would like to call Associate Professor IR Dr. Nofri Yanita Dahlan to give talk on Roles of Renewable Energy in Global Energy Transition for Enhancing Energy Security. Associate Professor Nofri Yanita, to you. Okay, thank you, Ashikin. Can you hear me clearly? Uh, yes. Okay. Rob. So, okay. Thank you, Shikin, for the intro introduction. Uh, and thank you, I3, IEEE Power Energy Society, uh, for inviting me to give uh, a talk uh, this morning. And uh, yeah, my name is Nofri, uh, Nofri Anita Dalan. You can call me Dr. Nofri. So, today I would like to share uh, a bit on rules of renewable energy in global energy transition for enhancing energy security. Okay, so uh, before uh, we go to the content, let me introduce uh, our Solar Research Institute, uh, SRI. Okay, so SRI is a top-down research center uh, which was established in 2018. And uh, our existence is to basically support uh, UITM for solar and sustainable energy research, uh, particularly on our uh, large scale solar project in Gambang and Pasir Gudang, uh, as well as for solar rooftop uh, in many campuses. So we are currently based in Shah Alam. Uh, we have uh, one satellite uh, office in large scale solar Gambang, Pahang and in the planning uh, to set up another one in Pasir Gudang. Uh, so let me show you, uh, this is uh, where we are located in uh, Gambang. 
And our office in Gambang uh, is together with the control room. Okay, so and this is the large scale solar farm Gambang. Uh, it's a 50 megawatt uh, capacity of a solar farm with 180,000 panels uh, and supplying 22,000 homes. Okay, so let me bring you to, the, to this 300 acres of uh, solar farm. So it's a huge land. So this is where our uh, our center, satellite center is located, together with the control room and our office of UITM Energy Facility, uh, Sundram Rahat. Okay. So and uh, this is our scope of research. And, uh, research. So we basically conduct research in uh, four thematic areas: uh, solar energy system integration. Uh, uh, basically, research on renewable energy, a grid camera inverter, uh, anti-reflective coating on solar panel, energy storage system, uh, solar power forecasting, solar PV protection, and also performance monitoring. And uh, we also do research on power de delivery advanced system uh, uh, that include the microgrid, uh, smart grid, demand side management, uh, as well as policy and uh, electricity market. Uh, for solar and uh, electricity industry. And uh, we also do research in energy efficiency. And, and not to leave uh, behind, we also uh, conduct research for the development of infrastructure, water and agro technology uh, that relate to solar PV. And this include uh, agro PV, agro photovoltaic and also PV tourism. And so you can uh, go to our website, uh, solar.uitm.edu.my for more information about uh, our activity. Okay, so that's a little bit about uh, our research center. Now I would like to uh, go to, uh, to, the, to the main content uh, of the presentation. So this, this is my content online for today. So I will start with uh, introduction uh, and then I will talk on renewable energy technology global trends. And then the roles of renewable energy technology focusing on how these roles of uh, renewable energy can enhance energy security. And then uh, I will talk about uh, a more uh, a more significant roles of RE in decentralized energy market uh, and also an uh, example uh, of uh, some project, uh, solar project in UITM and to show that how UITM towards sustainable energy development. Okay, so why renewable energy? And why, why uh, if you look at uh, uh, in the news or in the policy. Yeah? So government is, uh, many governments around the world is putting uh, more uh, efforts uh, for deploying uh, renewable energy. Okay, so why renewable energy? So according to environmental, US Environmental Protection Agency, majority of the global GHG emission uh, uh, were from electricity and heat which uh, contribute to 25% of the total global gas emission. Okay, so you can look at this uh, pie chart. So 25% uh, is from electricity and uh, heat production and followed by agriculture, forestry and other land use. And China is the main contributor yeah, of this GHG emission from fossil fuel yeah, uh, that account for 30% and followed by United States for 15%. So the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC 2019 report, uh, 
eh, has demonstrated that global warming, warming is mainly due to the increase in greenhouse gas concentration. Subsequently, eh, this global warming lead to the fundamental of developing new energy eh, using various low carbon technology, including renewable energy. So what, what is low carbon technology? Yeah. So low, low carbon technology is considered as a technology uh, that helps to reduce greenhouse gas emission and preventing global warming and be able to adopt to a low carbon economy. So low carbon economy uh, is a country uh, that is based on low energy consumption and has a minimal of CO2 emission into the atmosphere. Okay, so let's uh, look on the global trend of uh, renewable energy uh, technology development. Okay, so since the last five years, uh, renewable energy has grown three times faster than nuclear and fossil fuel. So in 2019, uh, uh, IEA reported that 27.3% of the global electricity production is from renewable electricity. Uh, which is uh, from this 27.3%, 15.9% is from hydropower and 5.9% is from wind. And uh, this RE is expected to lead the worldwide electricity sector by 2025 uh, due to economic stimulus focusing on clean energy by global country. And uh, it is estimated that uh, in year 2025, the power generated uh, from wind and uh, solar PV uh, will surpass the power generated by burning coal. Yeah, so you can see from uh, this graph uh, provided by uh, IEA. Yeah? So in 2025, uh, the power generated by wind and solar PV combined uh, will surpass the generated power from the coal. And it is expected that, and it is expected that uh, this RE renewable energy to supply one third of the world electricity in 2025. Okay, uh, renewable also are expected to meet 90 per 99 percent of the global electricity de electricity demand increase yeah? uh, during 2020 to 2025. Yeah. So you can see from this uh, graph, uh, this is also from uh, IEA. Yeah? So this is the world, uh, the world uh, forecasted generation yeah, of uh, renewable energy. Yeah? So uh, the growing demand, uh, the global growing demand, it is expected uh, will be supplied 99% by renewable energy. And uh, for in most the uh, advanced camp, uh, economies, uh, country, for example, United States uh, and the United Kingdom, yeah, the renewable energy uh, will replace the retiring coal and nuclear generation. Yeah. On the other hand, uh, in China, yeah, uh, about 70% of the renewable energy yeah, will meet the growing demand uh, in China. Uh, and in ASEAN, about 25% uh, yeah, of the ASEAN uh, demand increase yeah, will be supplied by renewable energy. <clears throat> and uh, as we know that a mobility restriction has disturbed the supply chain and temporarily, temporarily delayed renewable energy construction project, equipment supply and policy implementation. However, despite the COVID-19, eh, government from various countries has still opened up and calling for tenders eh, to install a certain capacity of renewable energy plant. Okay, uh, <clears throat> so we can see, for example, uh, this is by IEA uh, report. Uh, in the first half of 2020, <clears throat> there are 13 countries awarded, awarded almost 50 gigawatt of new renewable energy capacity eh, from 2021 to 2024. And uh, <clears throat> from this uh, amount, eh, 42 gigawatt uh, of this renewable energy eh, will come from solar PV eh, 
and now four gigawatt uh, is from wind of onshore wind capacity. Okay, and uh, Malaysia similar to Malaysia. So Malaysia, despite the COVID nineteen, uh, government uh, of Malaysia also has announced uh, an open bid uh, that cost uh, four billion ringgit Malaysia for one gigawatt of solar plant uh, in June uh, in June twenty twenty. So we can see that uh, uh, renewable energy uh, is growing uh, significantly uh, despite uh, of some delays in the construction because of this COVID-19. So uh, this is because uh, the growth rate of this renewable energy is stimulated uh, by a continuous support uh, in, uh, by the government of uh, various countries uh, in terms of uh, financial uh, and also policy. As for Malaysia, <clears throat> under the Paris Agreement, uh, Malaysia also committed to reduce greenhouse gas emission by 45% by 2030 in relation to our 2005 GDP. Yeah? So for that reason, uh, uh, you can see that uh, government is very active uh, now putting uh, initiative uh, for the development of renewable energy and low carbon technology in the country. Okay, so let's look at the renewable energy install capacity in Malaysia. Yeah, so this is reported by SEDA in 2019. Yeah, so overall uh, in Malaysia, 22.9% uh, uh, of uh, install capacity, electricity install capacity uh, is supplied by renewable energy, uh, where uh, most of the supply is by large hydro yeah, uh, and solar. Uh, in Peninsula Malaysia alone, 14.9% yeah, of the uh, installed capacity uh, is from renewable energy. And uh, this also uh, is supported by large hydro uh, and solar photovoltaic. And uh, there is a huge uh, resource potential of this uh, renewable energy in Malaysia. Yeah, so study by uh, SEDA, Sustainable Energy Development Authority. Yeah, uh, so PV, solar PV has the highest potential. Yeah? Uh, so these uh, include the ground mounted uh, the roof and the rooftop installation. Yeah? And also we have uh, bioenergy resources, uh, small hydro, uh, large hydro potential, and, and also a bit of geothermal potential. And in 2018, uh, um, Malaysia has announced that uh, it had set a target of 20% of renewable energy uh, in its generation mix by 2025. Okay, so 20% is set uh, because uh, taking into account of the impact of solar PV penetration uh, to the system and grid operation. Okay, so this is a study by uh, Energy Commission and the study found that the system is technically capable uh, to accommodate solar PV penetration up to 30% of the peak demand by 2025. Yeah, so beyond the limit, yeah, uh, then we will see uh, we will see uh, 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 a thermal performance uh, affected yeah, uh, and also uh, some load shading uh, might be activated. And therefore, a proper planning of renewable energy penetration into the grid system is very important. Okay, so now let's look at the roles of renewable energy. Yeah, so why we need uh, renewable energy and uh, how this renewable energy plays uh, roles in enhancing uh, our energy security. Yeah, so I will divide uh, this uh, into three sections. Yeah, so the first, we will look into how renewable energy is uh, paving the world's sustainable electricity generation mix, uh, a more sustainable uh, mix to supply the growing demand. And then uh, second one, we will look into uh, the renewable energy microgrid, yeah, how this RE electricity microgrid will enhance electrification yeah, and also the roles of RE technology uh, for demand side management okay so uh, 
as uh, mentioned by uh, Irina uh, in its global roadmap. Uh, so energy transformation uh, in many countries is driven uh, by the two factors. Uh, one is because of the climate change, and the second one is uh, to improve the energy security for a sustainable growth. Okay, and uh, beside uh, because of the ascending growth of the energy demand, uh, and we can see the fluctuation in fossil fuel, fuel price, interruption in energy import and export, uh, depleting of the fossil fuels reserve are also the major concern uh, of most of the country. Uh, so energy security uh, is dependent on the ability to secure fuel for generating electricity. A classical definition of this energy security yeah, is a stable supply of cheap oil due to embargoes and price manipulation by exporters. Yeah, so this is the, the old uh, definition of energy security uh, where at that time uh, to, to, uh, to get a, a stable supply uh, from oil. Uh, however, the modern energy security definition uh, and uh, the, the concept is more challenging uh, where uh, the energy security uh, uh, that many countries are facing now is entangled with other energy policy problems and uh, that not only the, the, the oil, uh, but also uh, in providing equitable access, electrific electric electrification uh, to modern energy and also to mitigate the climate change. Yeah. So APEC, Asia Pacific Energy Research Center, uh, has introduced a contemporary concept of energy security uh, that relate these energy securities with four A's. So these four A's is availability, access accessibility, affordability, and acceptability. So uh, it's very challenging uh, to uh, to determine uh, to obtain uh, an optimum uh, generation mix uh, uh, to, to 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 for enhancing this energy security. Okay, so uh, for the first role, uh, so let's look how renewable energy paving will sustainable electricity generation mix. Okay, so uh, energy mix or power generation mix diversification. Uh, is an important for energy security and sustainability transition uh, uh, that uh, combine of various fuel. Okay, so from its definition, uh, the power generation mix is a combination of various fuel uh, to uh, generate electricity in a geographic region. So in a regulated uh, electricity industry, this power generation mix is a choice of a country. Yeah, but in a decentralized electricity uh, industry, uh, this generation mix is resulted from the investment uh, of a generating company. Yeah, so, so for example, European Union uh, uh, in the European country, uh, so uh, the generation mix is uh, threatened by high energy import dependency and scarcity in fossil fuel reserve. Yeah. So Germany and Spain uh, are the two countries that uh, actively uh, pursuing uh, uh, this renewable energy uh, for their uh, electricity power development. Yeah. For, so for instance, Germany, uh, they put a more focus on the wind power and bioenergy use and recently uh, in solar EV. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Spain, um, Spain, Spain uh, come up with a plan uh, that uh, with, 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 a, with a plan that uh, deploy its renewable energy into three phases. Yeah, so where phase one to replace the um, uh, coal, uh, phase two to replace its nuclear, and phase three to replace uh, the natural gas. Yeah, so uh, in Spain. So the government Spain has put um, lots of investment eh, uh, in solar, uh, wind, and hydro. On the other hand, um, different in European country, 
Uh, the energy security concern in Southeast Asia uh, is due to the depletion of fossil fuels and shortage to meet the growing demand. Yeah, uh, as we know, because my uh, ASEAN country, uh, the demand is uh, significantly uh, growing. Yeah? So the shortage to meet this growing demand has uh, become uh, a, a major concern of uh, many ASEAN country. Okay, so for that reason, uh, ASEAN also started uh, uh, its energy transformation uh, by deploying renewable energy. Uh, for example, we can see a rapid development uh, of solar photovoltaic in Vietnam uh, and uh, geothermal power in the Philippines and Indonesia. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the a chart by IEA uh, that shows the world electricity generation mix by fuel from 1971 to 2018. And uh, so you can see that the share of renewable energy and gas increased each year to accommodate the reduction from the oil and nuclear. And uh, this share of RE in global generation mix uh, would rise from 26% in 2018 to 86% in 2050, especially from solar photovoltaic and wind. So this is according, according to IRENA Renewable Energy Map. Okay, so now let's look at Malaysia generation mix. Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, we can see uh, a fast growing, uh, a fast growing of uh, renewable energy development also in Malaysia. Yeah, so this is Malaysia generation mix from 1992 to 2018. Yeah, so our generation mix has long been dependent uh, into a single fossil fuel. Yeah, for example, in 2004, yeah, almost 80% of our uh, generation mix is supplied by gas. Okay, so um, putting uh, or uh, focusing on one single uh, fossil fuels uh, can harm a sustainable uh, generation uh, for electricity. Okay, so you can see that in 2019, uh, this is the status of our capacity mix in 2019. Uh, so 43% uh, of our supply is from natural gas. 31% from coal, and 70% uh, uh, is from lush hydro. Uh, then we have uh, a bit of uh, biomass, about 2%, uh, solar PV, 2%, uh, and others. Okay, so the same uh, trend, uh, the same development we can see also in Malaysia. Uh, for example, we can see that uh, there is an increase of 7.1%. Uh, install capacity of renewable energy in Malaysia. So this is basically uh, uh, this is basically contributed by uh, a project, a large scale solar project, where a total of 1,000 megawatt LSS project was introduced in 2017, and 800 megawatt from the total capacity uh, was awarded by competitive bidding. Okay. So next, so we look on how renewable energy microgrids yeah, uh, play a role for enhancing electrification. Yeah, so renewable energy microgrid system yeah, play a critical role in supporting centralized grid system yeah, for electrification solution. Yeah, so what is a microgrid? Yeah, so uh, uh, this virtual, uh, basically uh, visualize uh, the microgrid concept. Yeah, so microgrid is a decentralized energy system yeah, that supply from various interconnected distributed energy resources yeah, such as uh, photovoltaic, yeah, uh, fuel cell, yeah, CHP, combined heat and power, yeah, energy storage system yeah, over low or medium voltage distribution network. Yeah, and uh, usually it is also connected to main utility grid eh, for backup, eh, but also can function independently. So this microgrid uh, basically serve for electrif electrif electrification, eh, but uh, it also uh, can provide ancillary services eh, uh, to the grid for the for the reserve uh, operation of the reserve eh, to enhance the power system reliability. 
Uh, so we can see now various hybrid renewable energy solution uh, with battery storage uh, to accommodate the uh, intermittent of renewable energy resources uh, and uh, also with demand response uh, from flexible load uh, in the building uh, uh, through energy management and control strategy uh, to improve reliability of the microgrid. Okay, so next we look at uh, the rules of renewable technology for demand side management. Yeah, so renewable energy can also be deployed, uh, implement uh, uh, on the rooftop uh, at the building, okay, uh, or, or residential house, okay. So this is to to come for demand side management. Yeah, so this you can see that this is a uh, uh, this triangle. Uh, this energy uh, pyramid uh, uh, shows uh, how the sustainable energy measure uh, should be developed uh, in a building uh, or in a facility. Okay, so this uh, pyramid suggests that uh, to, employ, to employ sustainable energy development in a facility, uh, we should start with energy conservation measure. Uh, so what is energy conservation measure? Yeah, so this is a, a measure uh, that uh, account uh, from the change of behavior yeah, uh, towards how you use the energy yeah, to reduce the amount of energy consumption. Yeah, to switch off the light, yeah, to do the energy management uh, of um, a chiller system, for example. Yeah, so uh, this should be the start of, uh, uh, of the effort. Uh, in pursuing sustainable energy development in facility. And the second hierarchy in the energy pyramid is energy efficiency. So energy efficiency basically involves uh, retrofitting uh, of a technology, conventional technology, uh, into a more uh, efficient uh, energy equipment. For example, changing the conventional bulb into a more, uh, into a saving energy saving, for bulb. So basically, it involves uh, a changing, uh, changing uh, a system uh, to a more efficient system. Uh, uh, and the, the last in the uh, pyramid is renewable energy. Uh, so renewable energy for demand side management uh, to top up, to support uh, the sustainable energy uh, development. Uh, well, for example, uh, building owners can employ a small scale renewable energy uh, such as solar PV panel on their rooftop. Okay, and the energy generated from this renewable energy uh, can be sold under fit in tariff, uh, 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 or uh, we can use it first uh, for own consumption, and the excess can be sold to the grid under the incentive scheme uh, called net energy. Metering. Yeah, so in Malaysia, we used to have the in tariff, yeah, uh, but uh, uh, in 2017, the uh, government has uh, stopped this initiative uh, and introduced uh, a more sustainable uh, incentive called net energy metering, uh, which this incentive require, require the building owner uh, uh, to use its renewable energy for its own consumption first, uh, and uh, the excess can be sold uh, to the grid at a specific tariff, okay? So in the NAM scheme, uh, generally the revenue from selling the excess energy will be credited in the bill, okay? So uh, the uh, basically the, the scheme uh, allowed us to sell uh, and uh, get credited uh, uh, in the in the bill. And hence, uh, this could reduce the energy cost. Uh, additionally, for commercial and industrial consumer, uh, it, um, it will uh, able to reduce the maximum demand uh, by consuming the solar energy generated during the daytime. Okay. Uh, since uh, the cost of solar PV is uh, now significantly dropping yeah? so we can see there are many emerging business model 
for driving the expansion of this solar rooftop market. Yeah. So uh, for example, yeah, for example, uh, one of this business model is solar power purchase agreement, yeah, SPPA, and another one is solar leasing. Okay. So what, what is this SPPA? Okay. So solar power purchase agreement, yeah, basically, uh, it involves a customer, a customer uh, or building owner, yeah, uh, who is also the roof owner yeah, and solar developer yeah, uh, usually uh, come from a private private entity yeah, that develop the solar rooftop and utility company. And uh, the contract under the solar power purchase agreement, uh, SPPA, uh, allows a uh, developer yeah, to install, own and operate the solar PV system on the consumer's rooftop yeah, and sell the solar electricity to the consumer uh, at a specific uh, tariff. Okay, and uh, usually uh, developer, uh, typically developer will offer a discount, uh, uh, typically around five to ten percent of lower than the grid electricity to the building owner. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this contract usually take uh, take uh, a twenty to twenty five years uh, period. Okay, so uh, this uh, will provide a building owner uh, a green uh, energy yeah, from uh, from solar PV yeah, and also get uh, a lower tariff yeah, from this private developer. Yeah, uh, then the grid electricity tariff. Yeah, but uh, under this agreement, the building owner uh, will be contracted for uh, a longer, a very uh, quite a long period. Uh, depends on the uh, contract negotiation uh, between the roof owner and also the solar developer. So another model called solar leasing. Yeah, so solar leasing models allows leasing company. Yeah, or call solar laser, yeah, enter a leasing contract with the customer yeah, to own, install, and operate a rooftop solar yeah, on the customer's rooftop, yeah, on the building owner's rooftop. So uh, basically, the solar lease lessee or the building owner will pay for the solar system based on a grid rate, yeah, a fixed rate yeah, comprising the down payment and monthly installment. So the difference between the solar leasing and the SPPA is the customer of SPPA will pay uh, the energy that it uses uh, from this renewable energy system. Uh, but in solar leasing, uh, the owner will pay uh, a fixed price uh, uh, at an agreed rate uh, uh, comprising the down payment and monthly installment uh, to the developer. And uh, you can see uh, on the left uh, of this slide, yeah, so this is the new uh, NEM program uh, called NAM 3.0, uh, which was uh, introduced early this year. Okay, so the NAM 3.0 is more exciting yeah, with uh, different uh, NAM uh, concept were, were introduced. Yeah, for example, NAM government, yeah, so NAM gov program, NAM government, NAM government program. Yeah, so this is uh, for uh, government building. <coughs> um, and uh, under this NAM government, 100 megawatt is offered. Uh, and uh, it still use the same concept one to one offset, yeah, but uh, uh, restrict for a 10 years uh, contract. So one to one offset means <clears throat> uh, means uh, if you 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 if you have the excess of uh, elect energy from your uh, solar PV rooftop, uh, then you can sell it uh, to utility uh, at a, a one to one tariff, uh, a marginal tariff uh, of your electricity bill. Okay, and another program. Uh, also introduced under this name uh, is program name Rakyat. Yeah? 
uh, so this also uh, uh, remain uh, the concept of one to one uh, offset uh, this and this is uh, and government is offering 100 uh, megawatt okay so these two uh, initiative by government uh, is supporting uh, supporting the emerging uh, business model and so uh, matching the new business model uh, with, the, with the incentive uh, from the, the government uh, will um, will enhance and uh, will uh, will uh, how, how, how should I say uh, will help yeah? will help the renewable energy uh, f uh, growing yeah? fast growing of this renewable energy okay so uh, this is example of solar power purchase agreement yeah? so UITM uh, UITM itself has uh, embarked uh, with the solar power purchase agreement uh, SPPA with uh, a private company uh, UITM holding uh, and uh, uh, we already uh, installed uh, solar rooftop uh, at seven UITM campuses yeah? uh, Dungun, Pematang Pau, Jengke, Kuala Pila, uh, Alogaja, Segamat, Bertam uh, with a total of uh, 11 uh, megawatt and uh, cheaper electricity uh, compared to electricity purchased from power utilities uh, that we obtain from this uh, contract a uh, guaranteed performance of the system and onm service uh, uh, as supplement to the to the main grid and it is expected that uh, 66160 megawatt hour annual energy energy generation uh, providing 45% uh, UITM energy consumption and reducing 75k tons of CO2 annually from this project. Uh, and this project also can can uh, will become a living laboratory uh, for students uh, in the campus uh, for the lecturer uh, to do research, uh, uh, R&D teaching and learning uh, in campus. And uh, UITM uh, also, uh, uh, this is uh, basically the phase one of the project. Uh, we also uh, engage uh, and uh, have a plan for the phase two and also phase three, uh, where more and more uh, campus uh, will have this uh, rooftop, renewable rooftop uh, in their campus. Okay, so now uh, I would like to uh, I would like to share uh, with you uh, the future roles of uh, renewable technology in decentralized energy market. Yeah, so basically, I think you already heard about this rooftop. Uh, you already heard about this LSS. Uh, probably uh, SPPA or leasing is something uh, new uh, to you. Uh, but this is more exciting. Yeah. Uh, energy trading uh, for renewable energy uh, 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 is now uh, uh, globally uh, taken uh, in many uh, countries around the world. Okay, so there are two there are two business model that I would like to share here uh, to share here uh, relating to this uh, renewable energy trading. Yeah? so one is peer to peer energy trading. And the second one is virtual power plant. Okay. So uh, let's look at peer-to-peer -peer, uh, energy trading or called P2P. Yeah? So P2P energy trading, uh, this is a, 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 a medium, yeah? a, a market for prosumers to sell their generated electricity uh, at a better price to con to other consumers uh, who are willing to pay uh, the, the, the price that you offer. Uh, so for example, if you have a rooftop uh, in your house, okay, and uh, you can sell uh, the excess uh, energy from your rooftop uh, to the other consumer. Okay, so you are the prosumer 
Yeah, prosumer, uh, pros, prosumer come from the word uh, producer and consumer. Yeah, so prosumer, you have the access of this uh, energy from the rooftop, and then you can sell it uh, to the uh, to the other consumer yeah, who willing to pay at the price that you offer without involvement of any intermediate or third party. Okay, so prosumer can sell. Yeah, so prosumer, for example, a resident uh, with electric vehicle. Yeah, and it has uh, excess of energy from uh, electric vehicle uh, or a resident with solar and it has excess of energy from solar yeah, so they can uh, sell uh, its electricity uh, to the utility or it can also sell it directly to consumer uh, to gain better outcome yeah, uh, compared if there is a low back low buyback rate uh, uh, and high tariff from utility grid. And, and this peer-to-peer -peer trading usually implemented within a local distribution system yeah, uh, involving region, uh, microgrid, or in premises. Yeah, so with energy trading activity are uh, occurred uh, among utility provider, prosumer, and consumer. Yeah, so you can see something that uh, very exciting. Yeah, uh, 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 is happening, yeah, is happening uh, on the transaction uh, of this renewable energy yeah, and selling and buying uh, or trading of this energy, uh, uh, renewable energy yeah, within the neighborhood. Okay, so uh, in P2P, uh, the procedure, the prosumer, it helps prosumer to uh, manage their distributed energy resources. Uh, that includes interconnection of uh, electric vehicle, uh, solar photovoltaic, or if you have a farmer, for example, in uh, Europe, they have a wind turbine. Uh, uh, so this helps the, the, the prosumer uh, to manage their uh, distributed energy resources. Uh, if they have the excess capacity, uh, so they can sell it uh, and get some revenue. Okay. And uh, the P two P is not also only for the uh, it's not only for the consumer who has the distributed energy resources, uh, but also for the consumer uh, who uh, who actively uh, involved with a demand response program uh, in reducing uh, energy uh, in their uh, in their facility uh, could also uh, involve in this P two P program. Yeah. So in some cases, the distribution system operator uh, is responsible uh, for administrating the P2P trading market uh, to ensure reliable and secure option. Yeah. So in some cases, uh, there is operator, uh, operator, system operator that manage this P2P trading uh, to ensure that uh, the trading uh, is fair, uh, reliable uh, and secure auction and transaction okay so uh, in this uh, trading market platform yeah, so consumer and prosumer uh, will bid yeah, will bid their energy uh, will bid uh, to sell the energy yeah, and offer to buy the energy to meet their requirement uh, of uh, to meet the demand yeah, uh, and also to to meet the price yeah, or cost yeah, that they they want uh, and also the energy preference. Okay, so um, so this P two P energy trading uh, uh, is uh, currently currently being done uh, using blockchain uh, concept. Yeah, so blockchain concept is a uh, uh, communication ICT uh, communication uh, concept uh, to make sure to make sure a secure transaction uh, uh, is happening uh, between this the participant of P2P trading. Okay, so P2P projects go globally. Yeah, so we can see different uh, model that uh, were structured uh, based on market design, uh, trading platform and ICT infrastructure uh, that provide diverse characteristics uh, for the profit. Yeah? 
So for example, Peer Energy Club. So this is a project in Germany. Yeah, so it developed using a cloud-based technology. Yeah, so it's a local electronic trading yeah, that dealing with excessive production yeah, in the local community. Yeah, so um, prosumer, yeah, uh, prosumer uh, can in this uh, region, so they can they have access of electricity, yeah, so they can sell and offer uh, their their excess energy yeah, uh, in this uh, electronic platform. Okay, uh, another project, uh, Piclo UK and Vanderbron in Netherlands. Uh, so this is uh, another online platform eh, where energy consumer or the consumer, uh, the, sorry, the consumer can buy electricity directly eh, from the uh, producer eh, in this online platform. Eh, uh, and this system uh, or this platform act as energy supplier that link the consumer eh, with the producer eh, and balance. Uh, the the whole market which is the supply and demand okay and uh, another project uh, this is uh, another model uh, the by sonen community germany that apply battery business okay so this uh, community is the member of sonen uh, cons battery consumer okay uh, where they're making profit by uh, selling the energy from the battery okay to to the consumer that willing uh, to buy eh, and they also uh, performing uh, a virtual market energy pool uh, to trade the surplus uh, renewable energy is electricity within the member within the group instead of feeding it into the grid okay so <clears throat> IA International Energy Agency has forecasted that by the year of 2024, 100 million homes globally will have the solar PV rooftop. Hence, this will give a valuable pros prospect for P2P energy trading deployment. Okay. And uh, the good thing is Malaysia also looking for this P2P uh, project yeah, uh, development uh, and SEDA, Sustainable Energy Development Authority, has introduced the P2P Energy Trading Pilot Run in November 2019 uh, that uh, took about eight months of pilot study. Yeah, so the main objective uh, of this P2P pilot uh, project in Malaysia uh, are to determine the regulatory required. Yeah, uh, how the participant uh, can play eh, uh, and uh, what are the rules that to be employed, eh, uh, assessing the technical requirement for P2P energy training and also to determine the financial impact eh, between consumer and consumer, eh, whether uh, this P2P uh, uh, can uh, allow the prosumer uh, to make some profit and also advantage, give provide advantage yeah, to the consumer to get uh, the energy, uh, uh, the green energy that uh, they need. Okay, and also to identify the motivation for participation among the stakeholders, addressing the barriers and its mitigation action with respect to the P2P energy trading. And so this is the aim of the study yeah, by SEDA yeah, and the model comprised of three main players, yeah, which, is, which are the consumer. Uh, so the consumer uh, who are the entity that purchase uh, electricity, uh, uh, the excess electricity yeah, from the consumer whenever available. Yeah. Uh, the second player is the prosumer. Yeah, so the prosumer is the NEM prosumer, the net energy metering prosumer. Uh, where they can sell the access uh, and also utility uh, company uh, TMB. So in this model, TMB acts a grid operator uh, or retailer that coordinate the trading uh, in terms of energy and money exchange between the consumer and consumer 
via the virtual blockchain platform. Okay, uh, smart meter was installed at consumer and consumer side uh, to record the, the import and export of the energy. So the project was successfully ended its trial on June 2020 yeah, with a better understanding uh, acquired uh, uh, by SEDA, yeah, especially on the P2P energy trading concept and the benefits and the challenge. Yeah, however, uh, there are still uh, more study and yeah, need to be done. Uh, for example, uh, the impact of P2P to the grid yeah, because the P2P, the, the virtual transaction, yeah, uh, it's also required uh, to understand yeah, to, to also study yeah, the impact of this uh, P2P trading yeah, into the grid. Yeah. Economic feasibility yeah, of uh, prosumer, consumer, consumer yeah, and also uh, the whole uh, participants eh, uh, in this uh, P2P uh, platform eh, and also design appropriate business model eh, so uh, are essential to be conducted uh, prior to its live deployment in Malaysia. Okay, uh, so that is about peer-to-peer -peer trading. Uh, another uh, exciting uh, scheme uh, another exciting scheme uh, in this decentralized electricity market is called virtual power plant. Okay, so VPP virtual power plant appeared as a new cloud-based model. Okay, so satu cloud-based model that aggregates uh, a bundle of distributed connected distributed energy resources. Uh, in one uh, market uh, to improve the grid flexibility, securing and reducing environmental risk. VPP is different uh, from the microgrid in the sense that VPP can be assembled uh, using a set uh, connected to any part of the grid. Uh, it, is, it doesn't uh, require only uh, a set or resources uh, that connected close to each other, eh, such as a mass microgrid, eh, but uh, it can uh, virtually uh, connect any asset eh, to any part of the grid. Okay? Uh, whereas microgrid are restricted to a part, uh, to a particular location, eh, for example, uh, in island or within the neighborhood area. Yeah, but BBPP, yeah, you can um, you can connect uh, the resources yeah, uh, from any part of the grid. Yeah? So th that is why it's called virtual power plant. Okay. So with virtual power plant, a better integration of RE is envisaged yeah, through supply side flexibility. So in the VPP, uh, there is a uh, an operator of VPP uh, that will uh, optimize uh, the power generation source. Uh, uh, for example, solar PV, or if you have wind or combined heat uh, and power CHP, uh, and also energy storage system and demand side uh, demand side flexibility uh, from the load, a uh, flexible load uh, uh, from this demand response. Okay. So system operator will basically uh, will basically use uh, a cent uh, an energy management management system eh, to control uh, data eh, or uh, to control data and also to to optimize uh, the energy within this uh, VPP uh, system. Okay. So countries like Australia, Australia, United States, Netherlands, Germany, Denmark, and UK are the most actively involved in a virtual power plant with an established regulatory framework acknowledging this virtual power plant ready. Okay, so this uh, VPP aggregator, uh, it will aggregate all these resources 
including the energy storage and also demand response uh, demand response okay and optimize all these energy uh, sources so that minimum energy uh, uh, or that provide benefit uh, to all these uh, resources uh, as well as building and uh, consumer uh, in this system. Yeah, for example, in 2018, uh, South Australia has initiated developing the world largest VPP uh, by installing 5 kilowatt solar PV rooftop at 50,000 households uh, and each home uh, equipped with energy storage system, smart meter, and a computer system uh, to control activity between houses uh, and the grid uh, in terms of the storage and also the renewable use. Okay, in Malaysia, uh, the NAM 3.0 uh, uh, NOVA, uh, so NOVA uh, stands for Net Optic Virtual Aggregation uh, Program, was introduced for commercial and industrial early this year. Uh, so NOVA, uh, NOVA provide a virtual non platform uh, for a participant or consumer uh, to participate in Malaysia. Uh, so a very uh, interesting and, and exciting program. Uh, so SEDA just uh, recently um, come out with the guideline yeah, uh, for prosumer to participate under this NOVA program. Okay, so the aim of this uh, NOVA uh, is to reduce business costs uh, through the use of solar PV system by the commercial and industry. Okay, so how it works? Okay, how it works? Yeah, so prosumer. Uh, with uh, a solar PV system uh, uh, on the rooftop, uh, so they will consume the electricity generated uh, uh, with a solar PV system first, and then if there is uh, excess energy, uh, they can sell it, uh, sell the uh, excess uh, back to the grid uh, at a market rate uh, or system marginal price, uh, SMP price that set uh, by uh, SEDA by the regulator, okay, and then the electricity sold yeah, will be converted to credits, yeah, it will be credited into the bill, yeah, so that is similar to the, the previous NAM concept that I mentioned earlier, yeah? but what is different in this NOVA is the offset, yeah, so offset excess electricity yeah, can be performed, yeah, uh, uh, the excess electricity uh, uh, by the solar PV system can be offset uh, by distributing it through virtual aggregation uh, to other building, uh, to other electricity bill account under the same organization. Okay, so as for now, uh, government is uh, is uh, restricted to uh, three different electricity account. Uh, for example, uh, UITM. Uh, UITM have uh, many campuses. Okay, so if uh, one of the, uh, for example, if UITM Shalom, uh, uh, it has Nova, uh, Nova, uh, uh, Nova uh, program. Yeah, so uh, it can uh, it can sell. Uh, the excess electricity the, to the grid and the excess can be offset uh, by distributing this credit to other campuses uh, to other to the campuses to reduce the bills of other campuses okay? so uh, this is like an uh, optimization uh, to optimize the the energy use uh, within this uh, within one organization uh, uh, by distributing or uh, distributing or sharing or trading the the energy uh, uh, energy uh, and uh, by distributing or trading the energy from uh, from the buildings or from the uh, the facility uh, under the same organization. Okay. So as for now, uh, 
uh, it is allowed. So this Nova program uh, is allowed um, to be registered for three different electricity bill accounts uh, under the same name. Okay. So uh, now let's look at uh, how UITM towards sustainable energy development. Okay. Uh, as I uh, mentioned uh, earlier, uh, now most of us know, yeah, so UITM Solar Park 1, yeah, so we have uh, a large-scale solar farm, 50 megawatt plant in Gamba, and this was commissioned in April 2019. And this is owned and operated by UITM Energy Facilities in Gamba Hut, uh, via its special purpose vehicle, SPV, UITM Solar Power in Gamba Hut. And uh, this, um, this uh, system has 180,000 panels yeah, and supplying 22,000 homes, expected to reduce CO2 emission by 56k per year. And uh, UITM uh, is the world's first university uh, to finance this project via the issuance of ASEAN Greens, Green Suko. Okay, and also the public university with the largest solar power generation facility. Okay. Um, so first Malaysian public university to own a commercially operated solar power generation facility yeah, as well as developing a research center yeah, uh, to, to study, yeah, to do R&D in a uh, solar PV system. So UITM Solar Research Institute for Innovative R&D for R&E yeah, is developed together with, with this project. Okay, and then uh, Okay, beside the uh, the LSS Gambang, uh, UITM also has another solar farm. Yeah? So this is under the UITM Solar Park 2, uh, a 25 megawatt, uh, half of the uh, Gambang, uh, in Pasir Gudang, Juhu, uh, uh, that recently commissioned uh, end of last year, uh, 2020. Yeah? So despite the COVID-19, yeah, so we still manage to have develop and commission commission a uh, display a uh, display last year. Okay, so this plan is expected uh, to generate forty thousand megawatt hour annually and supply eleven thousand home. Uh, in it is expected uh, this plan to reduce CO two emission by twenty eight k per year yeah, and. Uh, SRI uh, uh, is also it is developed uh, to, to help uh, to basically collaborate with uh, the plan uh, to do uh, R&D for renewable energy. Okay, and uh, other than the solar farm, yeah, so UITM also uh, very active uh, in, de uh, in developing your solar rooftop. Yeah? Where uh, seven campuses, uh, seven campuses, uh, so seven campuses has already uh, installed uh, this uh, rooftop uh, under the phase one, and uh, six campuses uh, are more to go under the phase two, and seven campuses uh, under the phase three, uh, and uh, one of the program, uh, one of the program. Uh, in this campus, uh, we're going to uh, embark NOVA, uh, NOVA program uh, uh, in, in some of these campuses. Okay, so that's called UITM Virtual Net Energy Metering. Okay, so the concept of virtual NAM uh, under this NOVA, NOVA uh, as I mentioned earlier, yeah, so solar PV system installed at each campus. Uh, will generate electricity and will be utilized first uh, internally, uh, but any excess power uh, will be injected to the grid or sell to the grid. Uh, in return, uh, the system will get net energy metering credit. Uh, and under the virtual net energy metering, so under this NOVA, non NOVA, the excess credit. Uh, tadi eh, can be used by other campuses eh, uh, that are unable to generate a sufficient solar eh, uh, 
uh, or, or try to reduce the electricity electricity bill okay uh, so but under this virtual uh, net energy metering uh, on OVA, uh, it's allowed three accounts yeah, that can be registered, that can be registered under this program yeah, uh, under one organization. So that will give an uh, advantage uh, to UITM yeah, to, uh, to pursue or to develop uh, a virtual energy management system yeah, to reduce the whole bill of electricity yeah, by sharing yeah, or trading the energy yeah, between the campuses yeah, in order to reduce the energy and electricity bill. Okay. Okay, you attend peer-to-peer energy trading, via national grid, yeah, but uh, this is not still not yet uh, to happen yeah, as a government is uh, uh, after the pilot study is uh, uh, still uh, reviewing the P2P. Uh, guideline, yeah, uh, but uh, it, it's also potential yeah, to uh, for your IPM to engage in this uh, program yeah, because uh, we have 35 campuses across Malaysia, yeah, so to reduce the UITM bill and lower CO2 footprint, yeah, so each of these campuses yeah, can act as a, a microgrid yeah, that can sell uh, the uh, energy within the P2P, uh, P2P energy platform. Okay, so I think uh, it's already 11.23. Uh, so um, I stop here. Yeah, so this is the, the end of my slide. Uh, I spy, uh, I pass back to Ashikin. Okay, thank you Assistant Professor Nof Pianita for that interesting talk. On behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to thank Associate Professor Nofri Anita for the very informative talk. I believe all of us understand the main points from the talk just now. Now, I will proceed with the Q&A session. I will read the question from FND UPM. Um, Prof, any updates on the 1000 megawatt LSS launch in 2017. Oh, sorry, can, can you uh, can you read again the question? Sorry, Ashkin. Okay, uh, I repeat the question. Uh, FND asks, Prof, any updates on the 1000 megawatt? LSS launch in 2017. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Well. Uh. The LSS. The LSS bidding. Uh, the LSS tender. Uh. It ended up by government in a few stages. Uh. uh for example. Uh. The UITM Gambang. Uh. Is was the result of LSS. Uh, one. Uh, the bidding. Uh. In LSS one. And then after that, uh, government uh, launched for LSS2, LSS3, and uh, recently, recently during the COVID-19, it uh, was LSS4. Yeah, so uh, basically, I, I can remember the I can remember the company yeah, that um, managed or uh, successfully get uh, the bid. Uh, but you can check in uh, Energy Commission website. Yeah, uh, so you can see uh, the updates there. Yeah, for example, our pasir gudang, UATM pasir gudang, uh, that was uh, from the bit of uh, LSS2. Okay. Okay. Uh, the second question is from Zuhaina Zakaria. And the question is, will there be any effect to the grid reliability and security if there are too many solar energy in the system? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, if uh, there are too many solar energy in the system, uh, because uh, solar system is, uh, uh, is an intermittent uh, resource, uh, and yes, it will definitely uh, will affect the grid uh, reliability and security. Uh, and a study by 
uh, SEDA together with uh, TNB. Uh, so they come up with, uh, with, with the current uh, system, grid system that we have. Uh, it can accommodate uh, up to 30 percent of uh, renewable energy yeah, of the peak demand. Yeah. So uh, beyond this limit, uh, uh, it will affect uh, how the thermal uh, power plant will operate. Yeah. And uh, to accommodate this new dispatch, uh, to accommodate this new di dispatch, the cost of electricity uh, will rise. Yeah. And uh, load shading uh, uh, might might happen. So uh, in, in such case, uh, to to uh, to allow more uh, mm. renewable energy in the system. Mm. Um, one is the reinforcement of the grid, but of course it, it will uh, take a, a huge cost uh, to do reinforcement. Uh, other uh, to like um, to uh, install uh, energy storage system uh, uh, to basically uh, accommodate uh, this uh, intermittency of the renewable energy, uh, solar energy the system okay 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 uh, okay the third question is from dodi ismoyo and the question is if we were to supply electricity to tnb grid from these pv panels of ours do these pv panels technical specs subjected to tnb's sgp cj yeah, uh, um, for example, like uh, in your time, yeah, there, there is a process that there is a process uh, that uh, we have to comply yeah, to, uh, to submit uh, uh, or to register, to, register uh, to get this uh, net energy, to add to entitle for this net energy during program. Yeah, so, um, register with uh, FEDA and also Energy Commission uh, Malaysia yeah, and uh, to get the permit yeah, so that we can uh, have a, a, a license for this NEM yeah, to sell the access of the uh, of the solar uh, generated from our system to the grid. Okay, the fourth question is from the witness. Salam Dr. Nofi, do renewable energy able to improve energy security in the long run, especially for Malaysia context? Uh, well, uh, 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 let, let me give my opinions uh, in this subject, okay? So, uh, as as uh, as uh, as the current uh, the current you know, uh, the current energy supply system that we have uh, that uh, we are strongly dependent on the fossil fuel. Uh, so, uh, from my opinion, uh, yes, renewable energy uh, can uh, improve the energy security, but uh, I don't think so in this uh, near future it will replace uh, it will replace the, the most of the fossil fuel uh, because um, not like in UK the, the wind uh, wind has a, a, a large capacity uh, but in Malaysia uh, we are depending on solar photovoltaic uh, solar PV uh, which required uh, a huge land uh, to develop large uh, scale solar power, uh, uh, solar power plant. Uh, uh, compared to uh, if you have coal power plant, uh, uh, for example, 50 megawatt large scale uh, LSS required uh, 300 acre of land. Uh, uh, but uh, that can uh, accommodate a coal power plant of uh, like a 500 megawatt. Uh, Plan. Yeah, so uh, in terms of capacity, it, it's, very hard, it's hard to compare uh, to totally replace the uh, fossil fuel. Yeah, but yes, in the long run, uh, because we can see that um, 
the cost of this renewable energy is significantly dropping yeah and um, uh, significantly uh, dropping and i believe that uh, the decentralized electricity uh, market uh, will help uh, this uh, renewable energy system yeah, to uh, to develop yeah, uh, in the in the context of uh, the, the electricity uh, industry that uh, we have in Malaysia. But yes, uh, we can see that in uh, Europe or in advanced uh, country, uh, the, they are now um, they are now moving uh, aggressively towards this renewable energy uh, with their wind power plant uh, and also with the solar PV. And uh, Malaysia also has positive uh, positive view of this in Malaysia. Um, uh, because of, as you can see that because, because the grid parity a uh, grid parity parity is the cost of uh, generating so uh, generating energy from our renewable and from re now uh, nearly mid huh? and even uh, I, I would say uh, some of the country already meet this grid parity where the cost of supplying from renewable energy uh, is uh, cheaper than the cost of producing from fossil fuels, uh, especially in uh, especially in the uh, advanced country. So that's why you can see that uh, more power plant, uh, renewable electricity uh, uh, is developed uh, in in uh, in uh, advanced uh, country. And another thing that helps that uh, helps them is the market. Yeah, they they have a decentralized electricity market uh, that helps these uh, renewable energy uh, to play fair uh, with the other fossil fuels. And uh, they have that advantage of the uh, government after their government has put uh, strong policy support uh, to this renewable energy. Uh, and uh, because of the cost, uh, one thing is because uh, because of the the cost is dropping uh, significantly uh, lately. You Hamza Sul, uh, and the question is, what are impacts of PV power generation system on grid stability? Okay, this is, uh, I think I already uh, answered uh, from, from the high now question. Yeah, uh, because of the intermittency of the solar power uh, generation, uh, uh, so the, the, the supply and demand, uh, it, it will affect the supply and demand uh, where a more stable, uh, a more uh, stable system uh, is required uh, for this. Yeah, so study by uh, Energy Commission, yeah, uh, in, uh, the effect of this uh, PV penetration uh, in grid stability yeah, have been done by uh, TNB and uh, Energy Commission. Yeah, so as uh, from the study, yeah, uh, as for now, yeah, the current grid uh, uh, is able to accommodate uh, not more than 30% yeah, uh, of the of the uh, renewable or PV penetration into the system. All right, I think that is the last question. There are a lot of questions from the audience, which means this topic is really interesting. I would like to thank SSA Prof. Nofri Yanita for answering the question from the participant. Before the program's end, I would like to inform that we have provided a link to answer a quiz in the chat box. The quiz is based on the associate professor Dr. Nofri's talk just now. The quiz will be closed 30 minutes from now.
For the quiz, we will announce the winner in IEEE UITM Student Branch website and each certificate will be given to all participants. With that, we have come to the end of the program. I hope all of you could support all of our upcoming events. Please follow the IEEE Pass Malaysia and IEEE UITM Student Branch Facebook, Instagram and YouTube channel. With that, thank you so much to everyone. Stay safe and assalamualaikum. Okay, thank you everyone. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Thank you.